everybody. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you are here with us. We know your time is very valuable. And that is why we want to make this the most precise time that we can do is where you're reading through the, the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator, which is called the Torah. And the Torah in Hebrew means the way forward, and it is a life-changing endeavor that will forever change the way you live, forever change the way you think, forever change the way that you run your family, and it will change everything about your relationship with our Creator and His Son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Jesus the Christ, as most of us know Him by. But there were no J's in Hebrew. Gentlemen, how the heck are you? Good. Good. Really good. How's your day? Good. Good. Decent. Surviving the week? Yep. Everything almost, all right? Almost tomorrow's Friday. We'll see if we survive. Yeah, we're uh, playing uh, with a giant bull, a 1,200-pound bull. We're playing with him, but... Uh, we are trying to get him branded and trying to get him contained, and he is... Uh, He's wild. So. Yeah, he is. He's a uh, he's kind of semi friendly. He's friendly sometimes, but if you like push him a little bit, or he doesn't like being touched, he, he will try to hurt you. He's a giant brute. He will push through any fence. He will. He literally just pushes his weight on any fence, and he'll break. It doesn't matter the strength. It doesn't matter how the wires are. He just he'll get where he wants to go. And he bounces and he jumps over he fences. Does jump. He's extremely athletic, and he so army crawls too. Yeah, he army crawls under things, and he's a very bad cow. And so Something he's wrong with him. he's heading to the auction. So we're going to attempt to get him up the road into the auction place tomorrow morning, and we'll see how that goes. I, I honestly don't know how it's going to go. So uh, anyway, let's head to the Lost Statutes and Commands of our Creator, and we are <clears throat> in Genesis twenty nine, and um, we shall begin right here. Anybody have anything? Nope, I got nothing. Just, you all good? We're ready to go. All right. Then Yaakov went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither there were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Yaakov said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Lavan, the son of Nacor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Raquel, Rachel, his daughter comes with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot, until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spoke with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, and for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Yaakov saw Rachel, the daughter of Levan, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Levan, his mother's brother, that Yaakov went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Levan, his, brother's, his mother's brother. Okay, guys, give me a quick breakdown synopsis of where we are today. Where so we're it starts with with Adam. We are now to where? How did this? How do we get to where we are at right now? So we had Adam. We had his son Seth. We had a whole bunch of generations. We had the Nephilim, Noah. We had Noah that went to the flood. We had uh, Abraham. Now we're on to uh, Jacob after he had just robbed his brother of his blessing. Or and where is he right now? He is in the land of Quran. And where, what is he doing here? He is looking for a wife. He's looking for family, someone to bear fruit and multiply with. Okay, and so, so that is his mission, is to find a wife. And so all of a sudden, out of nowhere came who? Rachel, Raquel. Right. And uh, she is Laban's daughter, and uh, they were going to water the sheep. And he's like, not yet, until all the sheep are uh, watered. And he just ripped the ripped the stone off the well. He's like, all right, here we go, just water them. Right, yeah, absolutely. Maybe he didn't want to wait. So there, there's some chivalry right there, and so maybe that was maybe that was some cool chivalry. That I don't know, it's like kind of like the reverse thing. Like, well, here, let me water your flocks for you. Like how uh, Rebecca was like, I'll water your stuff, and now he's just like, I'll water it all for you. Yeah, he was a uh, gentleman. Okay, and so here we are. And uh, where are we now? All right, so we're, we're, like, we're like 10 and, keep and me in quarter. Ten, ten, ten and a quarter. Sorry, All right, so ten and a quarter. And it, it came to pass when Yaakov saw Rachel, the daughter of Levan, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Levan, his mother's brother, that Yaakov went near and rolled the stone from Levan's well, mouth, well's mouth and watered the flock of Levan, his mother's brother. And Yaakov kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. 
And Yaakov told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rivka's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Levan heard the tidings of Yaakov, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him into his house. And he told Levan all these things. And Levan said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Levan said unto Yaakov, because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for not? Tell me what shall be your wage, what shall your wages be? And Levan had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Yaakov loved Rachel and said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Levan said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Yaakov served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Yaakov said unto Laban, Give me my woman, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. All right, verse 22 is where we're at. We're going to continue on with this. Okay, so this was seven-year courtship, my friends. That's a long time. That's a long time to be celibate. I mean, that he's is, like 50-something at this point, so I think. 50 something right? yeah. Yeah, because they were, already, they were already 40 in one of the other chapters, so he's probably at least 70, 50 at this point. And, and so he is, there's a beautiful woman before him, and seven years, he is celibate, working for this woman. And so, I mean, that is something to consider, that, you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot, especially in Babylon, it's like such a, uh, giving away your... Uh, like some of the most, yes, your most precious thing that you can, your your, your virginity. Giving that away is, is something that just nobody even gives a rip about. And so, you know, for the youth that are out that are listening to this, um, understand that it is the most precious thing that you can possibly give the mate of your life whenever you meet that mate of your life. And so uh, don't... Under a marriage. Under a marriage, exactly. Don't... Don't waste that uh, outside of it, and uh, it, it never goes well. It, it, everybody thinks that they found the loves of their lives, and this is the one, and this is the, the right time, and it never ends up being that. And so, um, this is the this is your this is your uh, example right here. So, twenty two, verse twenty three, and it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, and he went in unto her, and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said unto Levon, What is this you have done unto me? Did not I serve with you for Rachel? Wherefore then have you beguiled me? Okay, so anyone want to give a quick breakdown of what exactly just happened? So this dude works for seven years. I'm sure he works like a champ, right? He did not like skip a day. Yeah, you don't want to look like a, 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 a tool in front of your your the woman's dad, right? You want right, to be... so he's probably gay. He worked everything he had to do, like... He busted his butt and he kept going, and then uh, he goes gets to the wedding feast day and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna swap the little one." He did not love. He did not love her at first. He wanted Rachel, and that was all he wanted. He got uh, he got bamboozled. He, got, the, he gets the wedding. I'm sure he was a little the, uh, the, little uh, tipsy there on the whole drinks, and he goes. Well, I mean, if this happened to. Uh What's his face? Lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. How much do these guys drink on these nights? I mean, what in the a world? A lot. That I don't even know if that's even. How possible. big are these wine skins, boys? Yeah, it, it's it's hard to imagine. So somehow, he was so sauced up, or something happened, but he didn't raise the roof until the morning. Well, he, it says in I think another book, Jasher or. We got movies. Nicole. That's great. I love that when Nicole turned Patrick. off all the lights. Remember, he made it dark. He made it he dark. He turned out all the lights. And she didn't have a voice. Well, that's the thing. These people have to talk, right? These these, these people. Yeah, he, yeah, he sat and dated this woman for seven years. If the night of their marriage, all of a sudden she says nothing, it's going to be really awkward. He's like, like are he, you okay? He, he you... grabs in the dark, reaches for someone's hand. All right, let's go. Let's leave the feast. No, this is me, Laban. Oh, sorry. My bad. They can't be the same physical shapes either. No. like. I mean, has he ever never has he held never her, held her hand? Yeah, exactly. Has he it's never like... His, like is her like, sister exactly the same? I mean, friend? they were twins. Were they twins? They were twins. Yes, and Jasher actually has that. Okay, I didn't but, know that. 
Leia, there's Leia's a the difference. Only. There's a big difference. He said uh, Leia wasn't as beautiful as this one, so I mean, he knows he, he would know the difference after seven years of like literally living in with them for like. And you would not want the sister if the if your sister was was the other sister was like. Yeah, there actually comes laws for this later on. Like, don't marry the sisters. <laughs> and this is the reason why. <laughs> this is about, you're about to, yeah, you're about to find out why this is as well. All yeah. right, so we just uh, wherefore then have you beguiled me? Is this is we hit twenty five, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, twenty six. And Levon said. It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this also for the service which you shall serve with me yet seven other years. All I can say is poor Leia. Poor Leia, man. Like, imagine oh, how she felt. Oh, man. She, she like... <laughs> She she like got with someone she didn't love, and then he's like he didn't love yeah yeah he didn't all. love her, and he sure dad threw her in there. Now he's like, why why do I have her, dude? She's in the gotta, middle of this, she's got to feel absolutely awful this Le, entire Le, way. Levon did this. He he did this so poorly. Yeah, dude, he like really like ruined like what could have been. Like, did he do have to do this deceitfully? Couldn't he have done this like out in the open? Hey man, you, you marry both my daughters since the first has to go first. You know? Look, it does. It's not done in this country. You know. You know. Uh, I'm sure like he as much as they drank, they could have cracked a, a brewski and sat around and said, hey. We got to do this, right? I mean, these guys I mean, drink to Yaakov intoxication. sounds like a obviously. sensible guy. Yaakov sounds like a sensible guy, right? He's like, he, may, he was able to make a deal with him. Can't you, Laban just come and walk with him and say, hey, here's the thing. Yeah, I don't know why Laban had to trick people. You know, he, people he, don't he, understand honesty is so much. It's like the truth will set you free. There's no, there's no such thing as like 90% truth. That, that 10% is always a lie. The white lies are, are still lies. It's not a white lie. This is just straight up deceit. This is straight up like a kick to the face, man, on the ground. But how did how did in the world did he make it through the night? How did I he, don't know. I there's know. a lot of questions that need to be answered. There are a lot of questions. I don't know if we have the whole story. We'll give it a shot. All right, here we go. Um, Nicole, where are we at? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. No, twenty. Uh, fulfill her week. So fulfill her week. She, he had one week with his new wife, and then he got another wife. <laughs> That's what I said. Poor Leia. Yeah. Poor. Poor both of them. Poor those those sisters. This had to be the most awkward stuff in the world. Uh, and Laban's like, gotcha. Yeah, all right, got both the kids. How did they talk? Well, Leia was talked into this, though. Leia, like, because he didn't just, like, grab her. She was talked into this. Everybody had to be in on this. Like, everybody except for maybe Rachel. Maybe even Rachel's in on this. I don't, probably not. She'd been heartbroken. I don't know. Rachel. I mean, she, wouldn't she say something? Hey, Yaakov, that's not me. That's yeah, it. surely she would say something. I think they were all in on it. They were all in on it. How did what? Where did the she go during the entire ceremony? Well, she would have been there too because with her sister, right? She saw her and then turned the lights out, right? And then they had like some sort of like swap, so she had to be like like, like dark feasting or something. <laughs> Dude, the sister had to be on this. They, they had, had to be. be. They both were. So they were still listening to their dad fully versus their husband or something or something funky went down. I don't know. This was a group effort. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're perplexed. We have no idea. All right. 28. And Yaakov did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, Rachel, his daughter, to be his woman also. And Levon gave to Rachel his daughter Billa, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto El Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah and served with him yet seven other years. So a total of 14 years for two women. And when Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely Yahuwah has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my man will love me. So this is like, I don't know, maybe like a couple of years after this? I don't know. Because there's like, she's already like in love, there's already a war in between the house. Dude, yeah. it's really sad. It's yeah, really it sad. really is. It's really sad. I mean, I it, she named her kid, uh, my husband will love me now. That's what she named her kid. That's yeah, I don't think these people would live in the same houses. I don't think the wives. Yeah. I think you're seven. Two separate houses. Is it? Okay, I Nicole's helping us again. I think it's in Genesis here. They actually I love have two separate woman. dwellings. Thank you. Yeah, two separate dwellings. Okay, so yeah, you would you couldn't do this. and It would just be awkward. It would be totally awkward uh, being yeah. sisters as well. Or even being shared wives. It would just be strange. What a terrible situation Laban has caused. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Jacob's fault. This is Laban's yeah. fault. Well, I don't it's know. All around terrible things. Yeah, horrible things. Okay, so where are we at? 33. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, because Yahuwah was, has heard that I was hated, he has therefore given me the son also. And she called his name Shimeon. Okay, verse 33, so I can remember 34. Um, so you could see that what, how powerful a child is back in the day to this. Yeah. Like that is where your heritage goes to. That is where the power goes to. I mean, we can look at Hannah and Samuel back in the day. Yeah, and I mean, this is why I guess the power of having more than one woman in a marriage 
is that you could create, if you could get, if you were a good man, like a really, really good man, you would have to be like the most solid dude ever. And you would have to like really have good women and you could make something like that happen. But you would want to have a big tribe so you don't get wiped out, right? If you were just like eight people in a house, you know, the neighbors are going to come over <laughs> and kill you or something and take making, your land. Making in, making generations as much as the sand isn't going to be uh, one kid uh, for generations. Yeah, no, exactly. And that, I mean, that's the thing is Yah has never, ever, like said, thou shall only have one one woman, you know, so that's something. It to, wasn't a lot. It was don't commit adultery, which is going and cheating. Uh, apparently other wives were allowed. It was like, a, like an, I'm sure, agreement with the other wife, and there was a whole bunch of other things going on. But Yeah, how would that ever go down? I do not know. Okay, verse 34. It wouldn't work in today's society. Should be answered on? Is it today's society? Is that what I, it is? I think it has to be. Back in the day. Back in the day, I mean, you could literally get wiped out. Like, you could have a tribe of, like, Ishmaelites or something come through and just come kill your entire place and wipe you out. But if you're the bigger you are, the less chance of some terrible thing like that happening would go. So, I guess survival. 34. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time will my man be joined unto me, because I have borne born him three sons, and therefore was his name called Levi. And, and let me finish this up and we'll chat. And she conceived again and bore a son, and she said, Now will I praise Yahuwah. Therefore she has called his name Yahuwah and left bearing. So this is the first time we've ever heard of Yahuda, and this is the very first time anybody named, you know, where the, the Jews come from. It comes from Yahuda. It comes from the tribe of Yahuda. So this is the fourth son um, that just came out here, right? Right. And so who was the first? Uh, Reuben. Reuben. Simon, Levi, and Judah, as you know them in English. And and Levi, he uh, became who? The priest. The priestly, like, generations. Yeah. All right. So, any commandments? Is anything? Nicole, do you have anything? No. Mm. Voice, anything? No. All in favor of no commandments here? No commands. All right, let's move on. All right, so here we are. Um, 30. And for those who are still here with us, thank you guys very, very, very much for spending time with our family. And um, you guys are definitely included in our family and all of this, even though it is a... A virtual table it is still a family table and we appreciate everybody who's out there and everybody's kind words and comments and um, every everybody who, who comments on here um, emissary of Elohim appreciate your time that you're looking into this site and channel and, and um, you know the things that you say and that you bring forward because there's a lot of stuff I don't know that you know and it's it's very interesting the people that are coming forward, all the people of Yah who are out there who are educated in this it is amazing to see the educated people that are out there. My other channel is just a whole bunch of like crazy people, and so it's it's a it's refreshing having uh, the the people of Yah the, on this channel. So here we are, thirty verse one. And when Rachel saw that she bore Yaakov no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto El Yaakov, "Give me children, or else I die." Dang. <laughs> <laughs> and Yaakov's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, "Am I in Elohim's stead?" Who has withheld you from withheld from you the fruit of the womb? He's like, this is not my fault. I've done my best. <laughs> I have evidence that's not me. <laughs> he goes, I've done my best. I've done my best. <laughs> and he said, Behold, my maid Billa, go in unto her, and she shall bear up on my knees that knees that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Billa, her handmaid, to be his woman. And Yaakov went in unto her. So, okay, here it's we like go again. Third wife. <laughs> we, we, it's a third wife. It's like it, almost like a Sarah, it's like a Sarah uh, Hagar thing, but I guess they, they liked must have been him. Like, they liked him, though. So. I guess the handmaids must have been like really good friends or something. Yeah, I think, I think they're a childhood friends that grew up with them and like maybe servants of the house. Or I don't know. Whatever they are, they're like really faithful to that girl or to who it is. In my version that I use, the Amplified Bible. Yes, so that Nicole's back in. Sense, it says secondary wife. Secondary wife. So secondary. who is who I mean Rachel should have been primary, but it was yeah, Leah. So Billa was a secondary wife. Secondary to the primary. Secondary to Rachel. So handmaid is a secondary off of primary. Interesting. That's weird. So yeah, I know it's it's very interesting. So here we go. Um I don't I don't even know what these conversations sound like. I don't want to know. And she gave him Billa, her handmaid, to be his woman, and Yaakov went into her, and Billa conceived and bore Yaakov a son. And Rachel said, Elohim has judged me and has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Billa, Rachel's handmaid, conceived again and bore Yaakov, a second son. And Rachel said, with the great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister and I have, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. Got the mats out wrestling or something? <laughs> uh, this is crazy because she's using her, I mean, this, these 
They're like, it's like these women have to kid. hate each other. Yeah, they're like naming their kids out of like competition. Y'all gave me a kid, my husband will love me more. Y'all gave me this kid because I fought my sister. I don't know if this yeah. is like, healthy. This doesn't feel healthy. Yeah, this feels like mentally draining. Yeah. This feels like, like Dan yeah. means judged. Dan means judged. Natalie means struggle. Struggle. Natalie struggle. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, yeah, they're uh, obviously like uh, snickering at their their sisters as they have kids and stuff like this. That's going to be mentally taxing on Yako. That's, that's, uh, crazy. that's where you're going to have to have a really strong dude to be able to control a, a herd of women, a band of women, especially a family of women. It's crazy. Poor dude. Uh, huh? A herd of women. A uh, herd of women. My wife is, pro- <laughs> is, sl- is I am now being chastised, which is probably correct. I don't mean to offend anybody. A group of women? Like, a flock? A, a, yes, a, a flock. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so, where are we at, gentlemen? We are at 10. 10. And Number nine. Nine. Oh, nine, and, my bad. And Leah saw that she had left bearing. She took Zilpha, her maid, and gave her Yaakov to be his woman. Okay, this dude. These are the wild years, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this guy's in good shape or bad shape, but here we go. He's like screwed up after like, uh, who knows how many kids. <laughs> I, I can imagine every woman looking out the tent door as he's walking in the tent to the other woman's house. Uh, this is weird, man. This and then like, the night they're sitting there just like frothing. They're like, ah. Dude, this is like some street is hate. This is your fault, lady. But I hope you this. Is, I hope you know this. I hope. <laughs> I, I think I think a single man, a single woman was is the right way to go. Maybe back in the days, like Adam and Eve, right in the garden, there was one one. You, there was no need for armies. There was no. You were at peace in the garden. That's why he said. That's why he gave Adam and Eve and didn't give Adam and Eve and Eva. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that that is it. A man and a woman do cleave to one another and they create one. Back in the it, days, it was all about survival, right? You have, like, wild beasts. You have wild people. You have, like, armies. you have giants running around. You're going to need uh, more than just, uh, if you can't afford servants, you're going to need multiple kids that can, like, can go out and you could, you wouldn't. You probably just couldn't go roam the land by yourself. Like, you couldn't travel around. It's like when... Uh, the stories when they're coming from Mitzrayim back and forth and, and uh, various times when they traveled, uh, they all they're got owned. Fighting everyone. Yeah, fighting everybody. Everybody's coming along the road and everybody's trying to kill you. It it's a very you warring laugh. time. That's why... Uh, well, there's no rules. There's no right. laws, right? So you can just kill anybody and it doesn't matter. Just... Like, it's, not like, it's not like you have pl- like cops everywhere like, hey, don't kill. I'm going to take you to like, jail. There's no such thing, right? You used to and the someone... Nephilim are the people that taught us how to kill. We Nobody knew how to kill. Nobody knew how to make swords. We were pretty much a peaceful people until uh, the fallen how, showed us this. Yeah, we didn't know how to make fire either. We didn't know how to make like weapons. We didn't know how to make implements. We had no idea what to do. We totally took a U-turn onto this road. All right, we're rolling back. My bad. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and Zilpha's and Zilpha Leah's maid bore Yaakov a son, and Leah said, verse eleven, a troop comes, and she called his name Gad, and Zilpha Leah's maid bore Yaakov a second son, and Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed, and she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother, Eleah. Then Rachel said to Eleah, Give me, I pray you, of your son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that you have taken my man? And would you take away my, my son's mandrakes also? Real quick, mandrakes is uh, in uh, Hallelujah Scriptures is called love apples. I don't know what mandrakes is exactly, I, but dude, in Hallelujah Scriptures it says uh, love apples. Dude, I totally thought he was like some sort of duck. I'm like, oh, this dude's like hunting the ducks. Like Ruben's old enough, he's Maybe going Maybe it's like mandarin he's probably, like, he's probably in his teens, he just brings uh, love apples. I don't know what love apples are. Maybe they're apples that taste sweet or something. They're probably a special seasonal fruit. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what love is. But those are love apples. I don't know what mandrakes are. If anyone knows what love apples are, that would be awesome to know. Like some ducks. I have no idea. But anyway, so this is, we just, we see a a major issue. Okay, so we stopped right here. My mandrakes also. Would you take away my mandrake, my son's mandrakes also, halfway through through 15 and a half. And Rachel said, therefore he shall lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. So, um. Trading the husband for fruit. Yeah, the husband (laughs) just got pimped out. Yeah, uh, he got sold. He got he's solicited out. So the lady got the and lady so he got, obviously lives with Rachel and hangs out with Rachel all the time. But Leah doesn't have. That's what I'm saying that. right there. It was like telling you they all have different houses. So he kind of got hired that day. So he probably had That's to open the door. Your mind, get inside. He's like, all right, what's happening here? He what? Tells you that. He does it. He's next, owned. Next, next chapter. Okay, here we go. Or next verse. Thanks, Nicole. All right, where we are. Uh, 16. 16. And Yaakov came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in unto me, 
for surely I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. <laughs> this is like the wildest story in the Bible ever. Nah, that was more than that. Like, 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 totally like a marriage, right. like a marriage style thing. This is wild. And he lay with her that night, and Elohim hearkened unto El Leah, and she conceived and bore Yaakov, the fifth son. And, and the, so, the, so out of spite, these girls are sitting here, and Giving so birth out now, of spite. now she just had another kid, and the other girls are like, ah, oh, God dang it, ah. Uh, so 18, and Leah said, Elohim has given me my hire. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Because I have given my maiden to my man, and she called his name Yisachar. And Leah conceived again, and bore Yaakov, the sixth son. He's a busy feller. Verse 20, and Leah said, Elohim has endued, endued me with a good dowry. Now my man dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons, and she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. That's seven kids from her. It's alone. Jesus. Like, this is like the war of producing, children. Yeah, I, know, man. Man. I, I lay out to explain this. I didn't explain this. So you explain the Torah, be fruitful and multiply. That's <laughs> definitely. We've obeyed laws. They've yes. done enough. Yes. <laughs> well, here it is. It's not over yet. Um, okay. And afterwards, she bore a daughter and her name was Dinah. And Elohim remembered Rechel. And Elohim hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said... Elohim has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef and said, Yahuwah shall add to me another son. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Yosef that Yaakov said unto Levan, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my woman and my children for whom I have served you and let me go for you know my service which I have done you. And Levan said unto him, I pray you, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that Yahuwah has blessed me for your sake. And he said, Appoint me your wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, You know how I have served you, and how your cattle was with me. For it was little which you had before I came, and now it has increased. And it has, it has now increased unto a multitude, and Yahuwah has blessed you since my coming. And now when you shall, when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, what shall I give you? And Yaakov said, You should not give me anything. If you will do this if you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and guard your flock. I will pass through all your flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and the, and of such shall be my hire. I would call the red flag on this one right there. So shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come, when it shall come for my hire before your face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Levon said, Behold, I would it might be according to your word. There is like some payback coming. So obviously Yaakov... Um, he uh, he knows like some serious breeding uh, techniques or something of the sort. So he's about to like show. I said them. payback time. Yeah, and uh, thirty five. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep. And he gave them into the hands of his sons. And he set three days journey betwixt himself and Yaakov. And Yaakov fed the rest of Levan's flocks. And Yaakov took him rods of green poplar. Here's the, here's the trick. How this happens, I don't know. Green poplar, and of the hazel, and, of, and chestnut tree, and pilled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters and the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring-straked, and speckled and spotted. And Yaakov did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring strength and all the brown in the flock of Levon. And he put his own flocks by themselves and he put them not unto Levon's cattle. I wonder how he learned that. Okay, so how did he just school Levon? So he like ripped up some tree branches, cut them down, and like from the uh, poplar and the, uh, what was the other one? Hazelnut and chestnut. The hazelnut? This he like, he, he like cut them open too. and like, Put them in their watering trough. Something so about the streaked. striped poles. Like, something with some stripes somehow mesmerizes the cows and leads or the cattle. Makes them breed different colors. Like uh, spotted. Uh, I don't know. How did he learn this? I don't know. How does he know this? I have no idea. How does Laban not know this? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and so here it is. Uh, Forty-one, right? 
Mm-hmm. And it was on flocks. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Yaakov laid the rods before the, the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. So this is not just... So... I don't. I don't understand how what this he's exactly. Watering trough, so there must right. be something that when they're does drinking in the water to their coat or something and changes. I don't know. Somebody out there knows this. I've seen this before. Somebody actually explained this before, and I was really mesmerized when they did explain it. Um, but I can't remember for the life of me exactly how it is that this when they do something with these trees that it, these animals conceive like they do. But um, I guess it's a cattle hack. So he has got the secrets. He does. <laughs> All right, so uh, 42. 42. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in, so the feebler were Levans and the stronger Yaakovs. Wow. Payback. Yeah. Completely getting robbed. And the man increased in seed exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. Now, I don't know why he didn't do this with Laban's stuff and make his, his people strong too. I mean, because he had two separate flocks. So I don't, were, were his. He's not all Laban. They, had some pent they, up were, they were a long time away. So, I mean, these things weren't, like, intermingling. So, I don't know if it's, like, the, the babies from both flocks that came out. I mean, he had the weak ones away from the strong ones. And, like, he yeah, he the bred sh- the strong ones. He took all the strong ones to let Laban yeah. have all the weak ones. Yeah, I feel like he's, like, angry about the whole uh, Leia Rachel <laughs> thing, and he's just like, I'm going to rip this dude right off. Yeah, he's completely poisoned in the well. Okay. <laughs> this dude's going to walk away, and all those calories like, sucked up starving. All right, 30 minutes. Let's hit the last one on this, because we still... Okay. Anyone have any commands? Anyone? No. Mm-hmm. Nothing? So long. Man, these, uh... The, the, this is not really 613 laws. It seems like there's... I mean, we're only at 14. We, we, gotta, we gotta wait till we get to uh, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and we get a lot of the commands. Yeah, so here's the question is when we get into, like, Deuteronomy, where it's repeating all the other laws, do we add them as laws? I That's where I feel like we're gonna categorize it, right? We have, like, what he says, don't eat the blood, and they say it several times in Deuteronomy, don't eat the blood, don't eat the blood. That'd be, like, under the category, don't eat the blood, and here are the verses referencing that. It'd be one command. I, like, was th- I think as we go through this, though, I think if we, we line them up, because they're still gonna be actually... Uh, Commands. I mean, there's still, but even though it's in Deuteronomy, we might end up with like seven of the same commands, but it'll be in seven different spots. So that's why you just put the verses to each one of those commands. So you categorize them and reference them. This verse says don't eat the blood, this verse says don't eat the blood, this verse, and it's all under the title of don't eat the blood. All right, well, we're going to have to go through this first. And we did see, I saw the message from Shayla, and I think you might have deleted it, Shayla, but I saw it about um, having commandments just for women. And so when we are done with this, that is the whole point, is we are going to figure out. What commands are for men, what commands are for women, what commands are for kids, what commands are for butchers, what commands are for Levites back in the day, that kind of stuff. What applies to us and, and uh, whatnot. So, all right, let's continue on. We are, hopefully we're not boring you guys. We are, this is a long, okay, 55. Let's, let's run this. Um, hopefully I don't lose my voice on this. Don't stop interrupting. <laughs> it's not getting any better. Okay, <clears throat> Genesis 31. And he heard the words of Levon's son saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's, has he gotten all this glory? And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Levan, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And Yahuwah said unto El Yaakov, Return unto the land of your fathers, and to your kindred, and I will be with you. And Yaakov sent, and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as that as before. But the Elohim of my father has been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But Elohim suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the cattle bore speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be your hire, then bore all the cattle ring straight. Thus Elohim has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. (laughs) Well, with, you know, Yaakov's help. Uh, And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in the dream and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled and grizzled. And the angel of Elohim spoke unto me in a dream saying, Yaakov, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up now your eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban does unto you. I am the Elohim of Bet El, where you anointed the pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me. Now arise, get you out from this land and return unto the land of your kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us and has quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which Elohim has taken 
from our father that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever Elohim has said unto you, do. Then Yaakov rose up and set his sons and his women upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Pada Aram, for to go to El Yitchak, his father, in the land of Kenan and Nun. And Levan went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the teraphim that were that were her father's. So teraphim is idols. Yes, idol. It's uh. They were not uh, holy people either. They were still part of the whole. Babylonian Nimrod system. So yeah, Le Levon, they all had they idols. Everybody had, had idols. idols. And uh, apparently they kept some of the traditions, even though Yaakov was uh, part of, uh, like, he was with Elohim, and I'm sure he wasn't worshiping idols, but his wives were. Yeah, and uh, I guess the statement, or the, the, the what they say is never mess with a woman scorned, or uh, I think it's something of that nature. But these two women um, did not have any respect left for their pops and so and essentially they upset with him yeah they knew that hey they got sold they got sold for labor and so he was working for you know late basically that's exactly what it was um you know nobody talked this one out 14 years of labor for them from the girl for the girls i mean true truly but um how long was it for the sheep that he did too? oh yeah as well it's another seven years so it was yeah so it took 21 years to completely smoke laban levon and uh well he ended up smoked <laughs> yeah he did okay <clears throat> Uh, 20. 20. And Yaakov stole away unawares the Levon, the Amri, in that he told him not that he fled. And uh, the Ara Aramee is Aramean. Here it says, him. and he stole uh, Laban's heart. He stole Laban, uh, the heart of Laban. Uh, could maybe stole his kids the or Armenian. something. The Armenian. He stole his kids. He's pawned off. Yeah. All right, 21. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Levon on the third day that Yaakov was fled, three days later. So at least he had three days ahead of him. That's a pretty good thing with didn't, big didn't, cattle. It does, yeah, it doesn't work, though, because he had all that cattle, and so he was going to get chased down. So, and it was told Levon on the third day that Yaakov was fled, and he took his brethren with him and pursued him after seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And when, you know, he said to his brother before, later on, he, he can't rush the cows and cattle and things or you kill him. Then Levon overtook Yaakov. Now Yaakov had pitched his tent in the mount, and Levon with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And Levon said to Yaakov, What have you done that you have stolen away un unawares to me and carried away my daughters and as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore did you flee away secretly and steal away from me and did not tell me that I might have sent you away with mirth and with songs and, and tabret and with harp? What does it say? What's a tabret in your eyes? Tabret. Tambourine. Uh, verse 28. And have not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. You have now fool, you have done foolishly in, do, in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do hurt, to do you hurt. But the Elohim of your father spoke unto me yesternight, saying, Take heed that you speak not to Yaakov, either good or bad. And now, though you would needs though you would needs be gone, because you sore longed after your father's house, yet wherefore have you stolen my Elohim? And Yaakov answered and said to Levon, Because I was afraid, for I said perchance you would take by force your daughters from me. With whomsoever you find your Elohim, let him not live. Before our brethren discern what is yours with me, and take it take it to you. For Yaakov knew not that Rachel had stolen them. So all of a sudden she went... Dude, imagine the, everyone like that knew that the idols were stolen. They're just like freaking out now. They're just sweating. You think anyone like, else or brother and she knew? I'm I, sure Leia knew. You think? Right, because... Yeah, they probably hated him. They, they, hated, they, they, they I'm sure it was like a group effort between those two, but she had him in her possession. Yeah. Okay, now 34. Now Rachel had taken the teraphim and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Levon searched all the tent but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Adonai, that I cannot rise up before you, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the teraphim. And Yaakov was wroth and chode with Levon. And Yaakov answered and said to Levon, What is my transgression? What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued after me? Whereas you have searched all my stuff, what have you found of all your household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with you, your ewes and your she-goats, and have not cast their young, and the rams of your flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto you. I bore the loss of it. 
Of my hand did you require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for your cattle, and you have changed my wages ten times. Except the Elohai of my father, the Elohai of Avram, and the fear of Yitchak had been with me, surely you had sent me away now empty. Elohim has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you yesternight. And Levan answered and said unto El Yaakov, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that you see is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come, let us cut a covenant, I and you, and let it be for a witness between you, me and you. And Yaakov took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Yaakov said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and, and made a heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Levon called it Yagar Sadauta, But Yaakov called it Galed. And, ya Lavin, and Levin said, This heap is a witness between me and you this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galed. And Mitzpah, what's Mitzpah? Mitzpah. Mitzpah, Mitzpah, watch post. Mitzpah, the name of two places in Yeshrael, <clears throat> and, and Mitzpah. For he said, Yahuwah, watch between me and you when we are absent one from another. If you shall afflict my daughters, or if you shall take other women beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, Elohim is witness betwixt me and you. And Levon said to Yaakov, Behold this heap and behold this pillar which I have cast betwixt me and you. This heap be witness and this pillar be witness that I will not pass over this heap to you and that you shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me. For harm, the Elohai of Avram and the Elohai of Nacor, the Elohai of their father, judge betwixt us. And Yaakov swore by the fear of his father, Yitchak. And then Yaakov offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Levon rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Levon departed and returned unto his place. All right. If you're still out there with us, wow, thank you very, very much. That was a lot of reading and that was a lot of talking on that. Um, Basically, Jacob, Yaakov, he just... Uh, they stole all of Laban's idols. They, they got away with it, too. They basically yeah. ran away. He said, uh, I would have sent you away with a party. And he's like, no, you wouldn't have. You would have robbed me of everything I had. Which so, is true. And yeah, Laban was not a just dude. He was not a fair dude. He was, he was there to get it cheap and get all the stuff back. But uh, Elohim stopped me and said, uh, don't do any harm to him. Speak no evil. Speak no good. So he didn't. He feared Elohim. He did what he said. I'm sure Elohim would have struck him down if he would have started messing with him. Well, he said his Jasher, right? Or Jubilees, who had talked about the story where uh, Yah came to him in a dream and mm -hmm. scared the oh. heck out of him. Mm -hmm. So Levon wasn't just coming there and saying, hey, everything was good. He had been owned by Yah the night before. And that's what Yitchek said. Uh, yeah, or not Yitchek, Yaakov. Yaakov, Yaakov said is that he had been judged yesternight in mm -hmm. that and so basically the rest of the story is they set up a giant rock and they stacked a bunch on it for and basically they, a witness a sign to, between those two that he cannot take any more daughters of the sons of the men and he cannot uh, harm his daughters basically and then he basically agreed upon that they had a feast uh, Laban said goodbye to all his family and uh, that was they it went, they went their ways yeah and that's crazy because you know it's like um, we don't have the, the commandments yet but they're packing around an idol with them yeah. The teraphim. And it's like something that these people, like, they cook to them, and they get on their knees to them, and this is their gods. They have a thing in Jasher about uh, Abraham. If you guys uh, want to look into Jasher, how uh, Abraham dealt with all that. Yeah, but they're still, they still have it. They can't get rid of it. And, I mean, even to this day, we cannot get rid of our idols. We, we're stuck in Babylon in some one, one way, shape, or form. And, you know, and unfortunately, there's on the back of most people's dollar bills, or at least in the U.S. and in some places... Uh, there's an all-seeing eye and things of that nature. It's Babylon's everywhere. In fact, it is everywhere. So it's not just the U.S. Babylon rules the world. It does rule the world. All right, guys. Okay, that's it. Um, Torah talk is over. Anyone have anything else? If people have prayer requests. Oh, if people have prayer requests, please drop them in the comments. We, um, we have a lot of prayer requests from another channel we have. We don't know if the people are active or not. We're going to put together a prayer request list, and if you guys want us to add you to it for any reason, um, it can be anonymous. We don't really care. But if you can give us a kind of a general idea of what it is we need to be uh, directing the prayer towards, that would be probably better than just a, a, a 
default blanket. We, you know, it's so let's target prayer. We're happy to pray for you guys. Um, we ask that you guys keep us in prayer. We are always under a massive uh, attack uh, with 10 pit bulls. We're literally always have our lives um, in our, you know, it's, it's, our lives are completely in Yah's hand. And, um, you know, it's, <laughs> we are, it's, it's a dangerous world that we live into. So nothing is promised and every day is a blessing. We must count every day as, as, the, as a wonderful day. Always praise Yah and everything. His name is, is glorious. His name is, is there's no other names, right? And, and there's, no other, there's no other better way than the kingdom way with our creator. And that is with the, the keeping his law, statutes, and commands. Gentlemen, tell me, is there, give me, give me a little bit of a, a finalization here about the Torah. What does the Torah, what does the Torah do for you in your life? Where's the faith with you? Um, how has it guided your life? What do you do in your life that you wouldn't out normally do? How does it, how does it do anything to you guys? Well, it guides your life and it keeps you under the hand of Elohim. It keeps you doing what he wants you to do because you're obeying your father who art in heaven and that's Yahuwah. And when you obey him, you receive blessing. Yahuwah will bless you or if you don't, he will curse you. And for those who teach against it, they do end up being cursed because it says they'll be least in the kingdom if you teach to break the Torah and do so. Right. And so when we're talking about all of these laws and people say, well, the laws of our Messiah are on the cross. You have to be very careful because if that's the case, then which laws? Which which one here? Do we not be fruitful? Do we not multiply? Do we what what don't we want to do? If we're supposed to master sin, if that law is on the cross, then we can let sin overtake us and and you know become very evil people. And so this is a guide. This is a path to life. This is not something that will hurt you. This is not bondage. This is a something that will enhance your life um, and bring you guys clarity. So, right. guys, with that, much love to everybody out there. Have a wonderful night, and we are out. Shalom. Shalom.